Hey everyone, welcome to A Better Computer. macOS Big Sur came out this week and I wanted to share seven of the things that have made the most impact on me having used it all summer long. And so the first thing I want to talk about is really superficial and you can get them on any operating system obviously, but the new wallpapers in macOS Big Sur are excellent. I think this wallpaper is maybe the best wallpaper Apple has ever shipped. I think it looks fantastic and just is just beautiful but there's tons of other options if that's not your style. We've got all these new dynamic desktops this year. So these are two big, this is a big Sur one, I should say. Let me move that over to the side, which looks amazing. Uh, we've got the Catalina one from last year. And then if you're on iOS 14.2, you'll recognize these as wallpapers that have been added in that release as well. They look fantastic on the Mac here. And then there's a simple gradient that kind of changes throughout the day. So these are really nice but that's not nearly the end. We've still got all these light and dark ones. We've got these pictures here, which again are absolutely stunning. I think these look incredible. And then if I go into dark mode real quick, let me go ahead and toggle that. You'll see this changes with the mode, which is just stunning. Just looks really, really great. So if I switch over to this one, there we go. That's the night one, which again, just this just looks incredible. I hope it's coming across in video how crisp and beautiful these look. Uh, if I switch back to light mode, then you're going to see it go to the daytime view. And yeah, just, just unbelievable. So fantastic wallpapers across the board. I'm going to go back to this one, my favorite, but then there's so many more. There's so many of the old ones that came out in previous years. So those are all still here. Uh, but yeah, just a huge collection this year of great wallpapers. Number two is Control Center, and Control Center got a huge change this year, and it's up here, it's this icon right here in the top right. So if you click on that, then you get some uh, things that look very similar to iOS. Uh, we've got your sound controls here, your display brightness. I'm using an external monitor uh, that doesn't let me control the display for macOS, but that's where this would display a slider here as well. Uh, you can click and drag these, uh, or you can scroll, use two fingers to scroll right and left on the trackpad to move them around. You've got a now playing widget here if you're playing something in uh, the system. And then you've got some really cool things for do not disturb. If I click into that, I can set do not disturb for an hour until this evening, until uh, tomorrow. I would love to be able to be a little more granular here to be like until my event is over or something like that. But uh, being able to say do not disturb for an hour is pretty nice. If I click up here, that just goes back to the main one. Change the brightness, screen mirroring for like AirPlay is great. And then these are some quick ones you can go in to change your Wi-Fi network. Uh, you can turn Bluetooth on and off and choose what devices you're connected to. All of this stuff is there. Uh, just really, really nice to have. Uh, so this is a fantastic thing. And then if you use one of these regularly, like let's say you use Do Not Disturb a lot, you don't want to necessarily kind of have to go up here, click in, click that, and then select it. What you can do instead is drag this into the menu bar and now I can just click it, say one hour, and boom, I'm in Do Not Disturb for an hour. Click it, get out, and I'm back to normal. So that's really nice. You can customize these to put as many in here as you want, or you can save space in your title bar by putting them all in the control center itself so that you can just access it all from one place. It's whatever works for you. Around the same spot, we've got widgets and notifications. So if you click on the time, then you're gonna see your notifications here. Just like iOS, they're grouped by uh, what app sends them. So those are really nice. You can read your notifications a little more easily. Uh, and then you have all of your widgets below here. So these work basically just how they work on the iPad where they go in a sidebar. You can't have them showing on the screen at all times. I would love to be able to do that to be able to have these show on the desktop at all times. But as of right now, they need to be in this separate space. But yeah, I've got one for things here. I've got the weather widget. Uh, I can edit my widgets. And so all of these Mac apps have widgets already. And then what's kind of cool is that uh, if you want to change the size that you're looking at, so let's change the size of this calendar widget. I can just uh, go to medium, small. If there was a large one, let's look at the up next. Uh, medium, large, cool. So that's really great. And then once you're ready to use it, you can just drag it over here put it wherever in the list that you'd like. So widgets have come to the Mac and more third-party apps should get them in time. There's not a ton right now that have them, but these will certainly be coming down the road. Next, we've got to talk about Safari because Safari has a ton of new features. And so 
you can see it right up here at the start page. There's a whole bunch of new information here. Uh, it doesn't load the frequently visited sites very well, but there's quite a bit of stuff here that you can take a look at. Uh, so we have your favorites right here, your frequently visited sites, a privacy report that shows you what trackers are being blocked. Uh, you have series suggestions for where you may want to go, reading list items, and then uh, from another browser or website, or sorry, another device that you're using. And then if this is just like too much for you, if you're like, I don't need nearly all this, you can customize down here and then choose which one of those you want to see. So I don't usually use my favorites. The frequently visited, like I said, isn't really cool. Um, I like privacy report. I don't use series suggestions. I don't really use the reading list and I don't want those tabs. So actually I can just do the uh, privacy report so I can really trim it down if that's all I want. Um, or I could put my favorites back up there. You know, it's kind of whatever works for you. And then this background image is optional, so you can turn it off and then it's just plain and you can see kind of a little transparency or desktop in the background. But if you have it on, there's all these options for including an image. I've got this one right now, but I could change it to this, which is a little silly. <laughs> or you can uh, hit this plus to actually just pull in any of the images uh, from your computer that you want. So. You can really customize this if you want. Uh, that's a little too silly for me. Uh, I'm gonna go back to, let's see, I kinda like this one. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna put my favorites back there and there. That's pretty clean. That's pretty much what I want. So that's really nice. Performance obviously is even more improved from previously. Safari has always been a fast browser and it's even faster now. Websites are just going to load very quickly. Uh, so if I go to like um, my own site, this is going to load nice and quick. Uh, everything's just nice and responsive. Another nice thing that I can't really show off uh, here because my computer is too old. I'm using a 2015 uh, MacBook Pro, uh, but if you have a newer Mac, you can go to YouTube and see 4K video, which is great. You used to have to go to Chrome for that or any Chromium browser. Now you can do it straight in Safari. Uh, you can also view WebM images, uh, which is either a good or bad thing. I actually kind of liked that <laughs> with Safari previously it would revert to JPEGs and you would just be able to download and more uh, compatible files since WebMs don't work everywhere. But if you use uh, WebM files or are like having them because they're smaller or whatever, uh, they are now in Safari. Messages also gets a big upgrade this year and is much closer to what you get on the iPhone and iPad. Uh, it includes message effects. So if I type in a message here and hit the little app thing, I have message effects. And so I can send these with all of the effects that you'd expect from the iPhone, uh, including of course, everybody's favorite lasers. So that's really nice to have. It makes messages feel much more uh, first class than before. I can right click on these and do a tap back. And so all those are there, of course. Uh, you can also see uh, when I right clicked it, I can reply to that specific message so I can do a thread. So all of this is very powerful and very much uh, an upgrade to messages from what it was previously. Then there's Maps, which has a ton of new stuff. Uh, so this is me looking at downtown Chicago. And so this is, you know, pretty normal uh, stuff. I can see the Art Institute of Chicago, click into it and see all of this stuff. I can navigate there and, you know, uh, do all the things that you normally would, see reviews and whatever. Uh, what's really cool is that we now have this feature which is look around. And so I can drag this guy around. I can kind of drag the map. And so let me go in front of it and let me uh, use my fingers to scroll. And there we go. And I can even go full screen and see everything here. So there's the lions that are iconic for the Art Institute. And yeah, just kind of scroll around and see, oh, look at all those buildings. Haven't been to Chicago in quite a while, but uh, it's a great town. So I'm looking forward to that, but I can, yeah, move around. Uh, in my book, this is actually better than Google Maps. It's really smooth. The quality of the images is really great. And so, yeah, glad to see these on the Mac as they've been on the iPhone for about a year, year or two. There's more to Maps, but let's move on to Photos. Uh, photos got some great upgrades this year, and really, it just, I just wanted to call out how nice <laughs> Photos is, uh, how much it's developed over time. And so if we go into, like, say, this image, and I want to edit it, I can see tons of controls. Like, this is Lightroom-level stuff. Um, so we've got, like, sliders up here to, like, increase the light, and that works and everything. But if you want to go a little more in detail, you can do that. You can go into Options and see, oh, this is actually what it's doing. Doing. and you can actually see it in real time when you slide those you can see what those do so you can kind of get close to what you want 
And then let's say I want to actually reduce the exposure. Um, let me uh, boost the highlights a little bit. Actually, I don't think that's quite what I wanted. And then I want to change the color a bit. Let me boost the saturation. So really powerful here. Uh, this is, like I said, these are basically the exact same things you would get from Lightroom and you can do them straight in photos. And of course, what you can also do is you can hit the magic button and it just makes your photo better with a single click. So that's fantastic for a lot of people. Now, not only that, but this year we're bringing it to video. So here's a video I took on my iPhone 10, or sorry, iPhone 12 Pro. And so it's an HDR video. Uh, it actually got converted down because I uh, transferred it again to this computer that doesn't support HDR. But you can see this just in my dog walking around. And let's say I'm looking at this frame and I want to kind of change it a little bit. I want to boost the saturation. I think it's a little too harsh. It's greener than uh, it's showing here. So. I can do that. Let me drag this over here. And then all those same controls are here, so I can boost the saturation. That's a little much, but you know, you can boost the saturation. Uh, let me reduce the exposure a little bit, right? Let's lower that a bit, um, bring up the highlights. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of playing around a little bit, but you can really mess around with this and then make it look exactly how you want. You can do some really good color grading here. And then if you want, what's even cooler is that I can say I'm done, okay. I can rotate the video. I can rotate it around, <laughs> that's cool. Um, and I actually, even if I go in here, I can apply filters. So all the filters, um, I can do like a vivid warm, I can reduce the amount of the filter, so it's just a little bit, and I can crop the video. And this is such a powerful thing. This is so hard to do, um, but I have a free transform here. I can just drag it. I can rotate the video, so I can rotate that and make sure it's great and then I can save it, and there we go. And it's going to uh, process it as a new video with that crop. So really powerful stuff in photos as well. So those are some of the features in Big Sur. I'm not gonna do a full like hour long video walking through every single little thing, uh, but there's some nice little things. I didn't even talk about the new design. Uh, the new design uh, is totally different. Uh, much more monochrome, um, single colors for everything. Uh, if I go into system preferences, I can go ahead and go to general, and then you have accent colors, right? And so accent color by default goes to this multicolor thing, and so it lets every app select what accent color it's going to use, but you can change it. Uh, so I can say I want it to be purple, and now I go over to photos, and photos has purple icons, or I can make it green, and of course those turn green. So you have total control. I like accent color because it lets every app have its own personality, lets it kind of be its own thing, uh, instead of being the same across everything, but you can choose what you want. So lots of stuff in Big Sur. Uh, it's an initial release. It's a little buggy. It's actually not that bad for me, but I've heard people have issues, so you may want to hold off, but there's some really nice stuff in here that you can check out uh, whenever you feel safe upgrading to Big Sur. Mm -hmm.